If you have your Bible, turn to Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Wives, I'm going to ask you to do something for me real quick. If you've been looking through the bulletin, you saw the title of my message. I need to, and there's a blank. Don't steal your husband's bulletin, okay? I know you're tempted already to grab it and say, mow the yard, fix the fence, you know, write all these chores for him. But don't. Stay away from his bulletin and let him fill it out, okay? I know you, y'all wouldn't do that to him, would you? If you have your bulletin, I'll share with you the outline for today's message. I have three points I want to share with you. The first point is be loving. The second point I'm going to share with you is be obedient. And the third point is be sharing. Be sharing. If you have your Bible and you have Psalm 118, if you would stand and and read with me the text this morning. And you can read this with me. If you don't have your Bible, it's up on the, on the board. Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to stand here, dear Lord, and, and share your word. I pray that you just uh, speak through me. I pray that I won't be a distraction, that I'll share your word, God. I pray for the decisions that need to be made here today, that they'd be made for your honor and glory. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to see how many people are like me real quick. How many of you need an alarm? Anybody need an alarm? Um, alarm for what? We, listen, I need an alarm in May. I'm a school teacher, and in August, I wake up. I'm ready. 5.30 comes. I'm usually awake by it. I'm ready to go. About December, January, I got to push that snooze one time. Snooze. Who pushes the snooze button? Anybody push the snooze button? All right, a few honest people. All right, so I push that snooze. And then come May, Brother Steve, sometimes I have to push it twice. I push it, and I enjoy that nine minutes. And I push it again, and I enjoy those nine minutes. And I know that it's going to go again. And I tell myself, I need to get up. And as soon as my feet hit the floor, that I need to thought just continues to go. Because I think, I need to go brush my teeth. I need to brush my hair. I need to get dressed. I need to fix breakfast. I need to water the flowers. I need to, you know, and, and every thought that you think, you know, you're, you got those thoughts that you have in the morning, the things that you need to do. But they don't stop there, does it? You get in your car, you get in your truck, whatever you're driving, and you go to work, and you, you, those I need to's just keep on going. I need to talk to so-and-so. I need to do this paper. I need to get these grades done. I need to, whatever, wherever you work, get this task completed. You go to work. And, and some of you, how many of you make lists just to check it off? Any of those people? Yeah, my wife's one. Uh, you make that list just so you can check it off of all those I need to's, and you get it done. But then, work's over, you get in the car, and you still got that, I need to, I need to. I need to stop and get gas. I need to stop and get groceries. I need to, I need to do this. I need to, I need to, I need to. You get home, and it continues, right? I need to do the laundry. I need to wash the clothes. I need to, you get it. But it doesn't stop. You get into bed and what do you do? What do you think? I need to. Tomorrow, I need to, I need to. And you go, all those things. I need to, I need to. You know, a lot of those I need to things that you mentioned, they're all good, most of them. Good things and things that you need to get done. But thinking about all those I need to, I need to, how many of those things are spiritual things? How many of those things are I need to read my Bible? I need to pray. I need to call and encourage so-and-so. I need to share my faith with fill in the blank. You know, this morning, a lot of people have came up to me and said, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. I appreciate it so much, and I thank you. I want to tell you this week, as God is laying the message on my heart, I've been praying for you guys, everybody that would be here this morning, that the Holy Spirit would work and move and lay on each of our hearts what needs to go in the blank space. 
See, we're all different. We're all different, and there's different things that God has for each and every one of us. Your answer is going to be different than my answer. My answer may be different than yours. But I believe today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Each and every one of you are here. Each and every one of you, you're breathing another breath. You're living another day. God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. He's got something that he wants you to be doing. There's something that needs to go in the blank. I don't know what your answer is. Particularly, there's three things that I I know that fits for every believer here. The three things that I'm going to share with you, it works for every one of us. Things that we need to be doing. The first thing is, I need to be loving. If you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. In verse 37 through 39, it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And if you're sitting there, you think, Okay, that, I, I, I do that. I love God. I'm so thankful for God. He's given me a new day. He's given me my wonderful spouse that's sitting beside me. He's given my grandchildren that says, hi, grandma. He's given me, he's given me, he's given me so, so much. I'm I'm, I'm thankful to God. If you, if you are like me and have, and you live, I live, we call it the Darnell compound. My, my brother lives just right in front of us. And my mom just lives a couple of minutes away. And so I, I kind of can read this verse, and I say, I love God. I love my neighbor. We know it's not just talking about the person sitting next to you. It's talking about the person on the other side of the building, and everywhere you go, we're supposed to love them, right? And you think about people, and you think, man, I love my wife. I love my grandchildren. I love, and you fill in these names. But Jesus gets a little more on telling us who we need to love. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Not only are we supposed to love those people that are easy to love, we're supposed to love those people that are hard to love. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 43 through 48. It says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? You're no different than anybody else. It says, do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. We're to love everybody. You don't have to agree with everybody. You don't have to support everybody's decision, but we need to love. No matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, we need to love. No matter if you're at your house, you're at work, or you're at play, or you're at the fast food restaurant, you need to love. You need to love. You need to love all the time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 through 14. It says, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. So I ask you, I need to be loving. What does that look like to you? What does that look like to you? Does, that, to, to, does it mean that you need to speak to someone that you haven't spoke to in years? I need to be loving. Does that mean that maybe you need to forgive or ask for forgiveness? Maybe it's to show love to 
a certain person, a group, or, or even yourself. Maybe it's to acknowledge that person that you try to avoid. You've all been wa- walking in Walmart at some time, right? And you see somebody at a distance, and instead of going down that aisle, you just walk one more or two more. God's Word says to love that person coming down that row. All right, may, and maybe when you, when you hear this point, I need to love, and you, you hear the text, maybe the thought says, I need to love so-and-so. I want to encourage you this morning to be active and not just verbal in your love. To show that you love people and not just say it. Friends, not only do we need to be loving, but we need to be obedient. We need to be obedient. Look in Deuteronomy. Chapter 5 is on the screen. I'm going to read you two verses from chapter 4. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I commanded you, that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you. Don't add to it. Don't take away. And in the na- next chapter, in chapter 5, in chapter 5, verse 27 through 32, it says, You go near and hear all that the Lord our God may say, and tell us all that the Lord our God says to you, and we will hear and do it. Then the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I've heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they have had such a heart in them that they would fear me and always keep all my commandments that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Oh, it'd be so good for them if they would listen. Oh, it would be so good if they would follow the command. Verse 30 says, go and say to them, return to your tents. But as for you, stand here by me, and I will speak to you all the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which you shall teach them, that they may observe them in the land which I am giving them to possess. Therefore, you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Everybody turn to your neighbor. And tell them, God loves you. Now tell them this. God knows what's best for you. God loves you. God knows what's best for you. And in His Word, He gives us His commands. Amen? We are not to add to it. We're not to take away from it. We're to follow it. And in James chapter 1, verse 21, it tells us how we're supposed to be doers of the word. In James chapter 1, in verse 21, James chapter 1, in verse 21, it says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. This morning when I got up, I went to the restroom. I was thinking of the things that I needed to do. And when I looked in the mirror, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I needed to brush my hair. And I needed to brush my teeth. I knew, looking in the mirror, what I needed to do. Guys, when we look into God's Word, God's Word speaks to us. It shows us what we're to do. We need to do it. We need to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. 
verse 25, it says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. In John chapter 14, In verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. So let me ask you, have you been being obedient? We all have been in church. We've all sat in Sunday school classes and Bible school, and we've heard what Jesus wants us to do. Have we been following it this week? I need to be loving. I need to be obedient. I need to be sharing. I need to be sharing. Look at um, one other one I didn't have up there. It's Matthew chapter 28. And you know it. You know in verse 19 it says, Go, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, and I... I love, I love, I love it all, but I love this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We are to go share, and when we got to go, when we go share, we got to realize we don't have to do it by ourselves. But Jesus is with us. Um, when I was reading this, I am with you always. I'm thinking about. Did you ever teach your child how to ride a bike, uh, or how to swim? And they're scared to death. They don't want to get on the bike. They're afraid when you're swimming that you're going to let go. And whenever they get on the bike, you've got one hand on the handlebars and you've got one hand on the seat. And they're scared to death, but you're encouraging and you just tell them, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's okay. It's okay. I'm with you. It's okay. It's okay. You teach them how to swim and they're scared to death. They want to be close to the side, but you're holding their belly. You know, you're keeping them up. And they're scared to death, and you're, I'm with you. I'm not going to let you drop. I'm with you. I got you. I'm with you. I'm with you. And isn't it beautiful to read God's Word? And He tells us to go share, and He says, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Isn't that awesome? That's so awesome. God's not going to call you to do something and then just leave you hanging. He's telling us to go share. He's going to be with us. The Holy Spirit, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you. And he's going to lead you, and you're going to, he's going to direct you. And you just got to be following it. Look in Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. My, my boys always do a good job when I ask them who wrote. So boys, I'm going to put you on the spot. How do you all know who wrote the book of Colossians? Paul. Everybody said, good job, kids. Good job. Paul wrote it. And I was thinking about this because Paul wrote a lot of books in in the New Testament, right? And in his writings, he's writing to address certain issues. He's writing to encourage. He's writing to uplift. He's writing to instruct. And I was thinking about that. And I was thinking Paul is somebody that knew Christ, right? Paul was somebody that was a little farther down down the road in his Christianity and in his service to Christ. And he was writing to people that weren't so far along. And I was thinking about us here this morning. I got saved, I was saved in 1993. So almost 30 years I, I've known Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Who can raise their hand and say, I've known him longer? Many of you, right? You are, you're, you've, been, you've traveled the path. You, you have experienced God and Jesus working and moving in your life. I want to encourage you. I need to be sharing. Not only sharing with the lost about how Jesus Christ can change their life, but sharing with the ones that haven't been down the road as long as you. Telling them God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And telling them about how God saw you through a trial in your life. Telling them about how God has provided and protected for you. Don't stay silent, but be sharing. Paul, in in his writings, you see him constantly sharing and encouraging others. And you see it in this text in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 through 6. It says, 
continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm also in chains. Pray for us as we share. Verse 4, it says, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Verse 5 says, walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. And then the last verse that I'm going to share with you, look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. When it comes to sharing your faith, are you living a life ashamed or unashamed? Are you sharing with others? Or are you keeping quiet? Are you letting fear rule? Are you trusting in Jesus to speak up and speak out? You know, when you, you think about sharing, what does that look like and, and what do you need to be doing? I encourage you to think about how you act in front of others, how you treat people, how you speak. And understand that, that many people you come across will never be reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, will never be reading the Gospels, but what they will see is the gospel according to you. Say, friend, this morning, I know you know it, but I'm going to tell you again, God loves you. God loves you. God has placed you here for a purpose and a plan. He's got a purpose and plan for your life. We read, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You're still here. You're still here. He's got a plan for you. And so I want to ask you again, what needs to go in the blank? What is the Holy Spirit leading you to do? What is He calling you to do? You know, you think about these, when you think about things that you need to do in the day, it's hard and, and uh, just to struggle sometimes, Right? When you think about things that you need to do for the Lord, it's hard. It's hard. It's not always easy. It's tiring. You may get made fun of. You may face different trials and persecutions. But Brother Steve, in this last song, he's saying, it will be worth it all when we see Christ. Listen, I, I appreciated everybody telling me they've been praying for me. And I, again, I, I pray for you this week. Every time that the Holy Spirit would lay on your heart what to put on that blank. And that what I tried to do this week is God laid this title on my heart is each day I need to. I, I said that, and then I just was quiet. And allow God to just speak to me. I encourage you this week to do that. To ask God, what do I need to do? And just be quiet and let Him speak to you. Lost friend, you're here this morning. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to accept Christ. And it says in the Bible, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It also says, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lost friend, Jesus loves you. And he came to this earth for a purpose. He came to die for you. And you think about things that you need to do, the most important is to accept him as Lord and Savior. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you. 
My words are weak, but your spirit is strong. God, I pray that you convict each and every one of us of the things that we need to do for you, for your honor and glory. Too many times in our life, we, we think about things that only matter for the day. God, I pray that you place things in our heart that matter for eternity. I pray that we would do your will. God, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.